Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on what time you're watching this. My name's Connor from 905 Review. You're tuning into our series, Give This a Spin, where I recommend you guys some of my favorite albums. Today we look at the 2015 collaboration between Ghostface Killa and Bad Bad Not Good with Sour Soul. Ghostface is, of course, one of the main rappers of the iconic Wu-Tang Clan and among the greatest storytellers in hip-hop. Bad Bad Not Good, meanwhile, are a new jazz slash instrumental hip hop group from Toronto. They are composed of Chester Hansen, Alexander Sawinski, and Matthew Tavares. Though they look a little similar, were both born in Mississauga and only five days apart, Matthew Tavares and Toronto Maple Leafs captain Jonathan Tavares don't seem to be related, at least not closely. If you come around here often, you may have heard Bad Bad Not Good before. They provided the beat to a song off the Earl Sweatshirt album, Doris, which I previously reviewed. And with that quick intro out of the way, let's jump into Sour Soul. The album begins with its instrumental intro, Mono. Utilizing only a minute to set the tone for the album, it shows you the overall sound that we're in for before a drum break announces itself as a transition into the title track. On Sour Soul, we have Ghostface demonstrating his views of the world in the current state it's in, namely a distrust for the government, over a real smooth and nice jazzy beat. Rigorous, my war face is one that God gave me. Evil cause I looked all bugged out and crazy, dusted. The instrumentals on the second verse around have a much more dreamier sound to them. Big fan of the bass work on this, as well as the bridge and the outro. Come on, man. Yo, yo, fuck the CIA, DA and the feds, they got you bugs, sir. Following this, we have Six Degrees. I absolutely love the beat to this. It feels laid back, but grooving at the same time. The guitars have this wonderful tone to them that I can only try and describe as having a bit of like a wet sound. Alicia, bottles of the 150 poured over the squishness. Broken bones, the pillars, Staten Island's the illest. The biggest landfillers, we creep like caterpillars. The instrumentals are great. The rapping's pretty good too, with Ghostface delivering two verses about drug hustling and being in the hood, uh, with one verse in between being delivered by featured rapper Danny Brown. If you're unfamiliar with Danny Brown, he's an exceptional lyricist who can deliver um, good, meaningful, strong hitting lines, as well as hilariously goofy ones as well. Um, along with this, he does have a very distinct voice though, which can generally take people some time to get used to, but once you do finally come around to him, should you, you're you're probably bound to appreciate his wordplay at the very least. The song then ends with a near minute long instrumental outro. After this is the album's first single in Gun Showers. It has Ghostface rapping about why you shouldn't mess with him. And again, we get to hear a featured rapper, this time Elzai, who brings a pretty fire verse of his own. If you hit the rock bottom of the asphalt, it's likely your asphalt. My lines of cocaine, the flow is bath sauce. I'm a for sure dawn. All of this over another one of the group's best beats on the album. I like the sound brought by the supporting guitar that just wails away. It's got a, like a very Western feel to it. Matter of fact, this could be my favorite song on the album. Come through in the final hour with gun showers. Stand the fuck up like flame to fight the power. I'm an activist, a socialist, deadly ass poetess. At the fifth track now, we reach the instrumental Stark's Reality. It is an absolutely gorgeous sounding interlude and very cinematic, I want to say. Feels like it would play during a movie scene where somebody's searching for something, maybe even investigating something or someone. And closing the first side of the album is Tones Rap, where Ghostface complains about 
The struggles of being a pimp. It's interesting that he's not even really rapping the lyrics on this and is much more emotional in the delivery of many of these lines. But I suppose he's just that passionate about the business. After all, he does end by saying, pimping ain't easy, but it sure is fun. Fuck, I got lint on my robes. I can't pimp in these clothes. That fucking hoes is killing me. Both the title of this track and the previous one, of course, come from Tony Stark, a.k.a. Iron Man, who Ghostface has made his alter ego throughout much of his career. Opening the second side of the album, we have Mind Playing Tricks. The beat on this is easily among the best on the album. Again, just Ghostface rapping about drug dealing. Fuck the black, the blue, watch me a neighborhood creatures. But the bleachers, chemistry teachers, cooking meth. I got a meth in my clip, Johnny Blaze with death. I'm no half, I like bitches, hardcore and deuces. Run through bad life. We then get to the song Street Knowledge about, well, street knowledge. Ghostface, preceded by rapper MC Tree G, rap about smart ways to go about your business so as to avoid getting locked up or worse yet taken out. The beat carries this real nice dreamy and laid back sound to it. More gunshots than them for Lucha call it Chirac. Hundred G lines, no time to lie back, one in my back. Get a real junkie to test the product, hold it out your spot. Warm up the pot, let it rock up, stay on your ground. After this is the upbeat ninth track, Ray Gun, and the final single released from the album. Here we have the super duo of Iron Man and MF Doom, with both rappers comparing their lives to their alter egos, with the rapping first half and instrumental second half of the song sounding vastly different, yet both still influenced by 60s superhero cartoon scores. We were at some point supposed to hear more of the tandem, as they have an unreleased, perhaps even unfinished album. Next is the uplifting Nuggets of Wisdom. We hear the recent Islamic convert praising Allah and trying to see a more positive side to life. Yeah, yo, from the righteous minds of the law, he powers my soul, teaching me positivity in the whole. This mood is really helped by its bright piano playing in the beat. Continuing in a streak of positivity, we follow up with the 11th track, Food. Ghostface raps about taking care of yourself via exercise and good eating, as well as giving back to your community for a great feel-good tune concluding his part on the album. Eat fish, that brain food will get you smart. Yoga, deep meditation and tactics. You know good than just practice, cause practice makes perfect. Stop burying the lies and bring the truth to the surface. It's very heartfelt, and the group portrays as well through their melodies, specifically at the bridge, which hit me pretty good. Technology, make the right choice, no need for an apology. And closing the album, we have Experience. The two and a half minute instrumental is just an extended recording of the album's intro, bringing Sour Soul full circle. The original 2015 vinyls came in a package that included the CDs as well, however the 2020 represses did not. One variant of the 2015 vinyls, however, was a golden 180 gram record. The instrumentals to the album were also sold individually, with their own distinctive sleeve. Sour Soul would receive generally positive reviews upon its release, with most professional critics rating it in roughly the same ballpark. The album would go on to peak at 109 on the Billboard Albums chart, as well as number 6 on the Rap Albums chart. The legendary lyricist and Ghostface Killa, and the then upcoming talents in Bad Bad Not Good. What a tandem they made across these 33 minutes. All in all, a good listen. Now for some insight of your own, my method to reviewing albums is, if I'm hearing it for the first time, I'll just put it on in the background while I'm doing something like chores or playing video games, just kind of half listening to it. And if songs that I'm only half listening to are able to resonate with me enough that I want to hear them again, odds are that I'd enjoy the album if there's enough songs like these on it when I'm only half paying attention, right? With that being said, 
Sour Soul was one of the last albums that, upon that first half listen, I already considered an A-graded album. Clearly these ratings are subject to change because, as we've seen with a couple of my past album reviews, the more familiar I got with them, the more my view of the album changed. Now, since these are albums I'm all recommending to you, these all change for the better, of course. Unfortunately, that's not the case today. Listening to Sour Soul more perceptively, my view of it has diminished. Admittedly, this is only by a small little amount, leading it to go from a high tier A to a low tier A. But hey, it's still an A nonetheless. I'd have to say the instrumental components impressed me most, with the lush sound the keyboards and the guitars bring, the great bass work across the album, and the very jazz-influenced drums. With that being said, that's been this guy's opinion on this album. Let me know your thoughts, and we'll see you next time. But, real quick, before we take off, what were your thoughts on Sour Soul? Did I rate it too high or did I rate it too low? Let me know down below, as well as any other thoughts, comments you might have, album recommendations you might have, and we'll see you next time.